chapter 6 self discipline and courage courage is not absence of fear it is control of fear mastery of fear mark i won you need large amount of self discipline to be courageous with all the fear inducing events of your life this is probably by churchill said courage is rightly considered the four most of the virtues for upon them all others depend The fact is that everyone is afraid and usually of many things. This is normal and natural. Often fear is necessary to preserve life, prevent injury, and guard against financial mistakes. So, if everyone is afraid, what is the difference between the brave person and the coward? The only difference is that the brave person disciplines himself to confront, deal with, and act in spite of the fear. In contrast, the coward allows himself to be dominated and controlled by the fear. Someone once said that, with regard to warfare, although it applies to any situation, the difference between the hero and the coward is that the hero sticks in three five minutes longer. Fears can be unlearned. Fortunately, all fears are learned. No one is born with fears. Fears can therefore be unlearned by practicing self-discipline repeatedly with regard to fear until it goes away. The most common fear that we experience, which often sabotage our hope for success, are the fears of failure, poverty, and loss of money. These fears cause people to avoid risk of any kind and to reject opportunity. when it is presented to them they are so afraid of failure that they are almost paralyzed when it comes to taking any chances at all there are many other fears that interfere with our happiness people fear the loss of love or the loss of their jobs and their financial security people fear embarrassment or ridicule People fear rejection and criticism of any kind. People fear the loss of respect or esteem of others. These and many other fears hold us back throughout life. Fear paralyzes action. The most common reaction in a fear situation is the attitude of "I can't." This is the fear of failure and loss that stops. us from taking action it is experienced physically starting in the solar plexus when people are really afraid their mouth and throat go dry their heart starts pounding sometimes they breathe shallowly and their stomach churns often they feel like getting up and running to the bathroom these are all physical manifestations of the in heat better negative habit pattern with which all experience from time to time whenever a person is in the grip of fear he feels like a deer caught in the headlights of a car this fear paralyzes action it often shut down the brain and stops the ability to revert to the fight or flight reaction fear is a terrible emotion that undermines our happiness and can hold us back throughout our lives do the opposite aristotle described courage as a golden mean between the extremes of cowardice and impetuousness he thought that to develop a quality that you lack act as if you already had that quality in every situation where it is called for in modern terms However, we say fake it until you make it. You can actually change your behavior by affirming, visualizing, and acting as if you already have the quality you desire. By affirming, by repeating the words, "I can do it." Empathetically, whenever you feel afraid for any reason, you can cancel the feeling of "I can't." Every time you repeat the words, "I can do this," with Conviction, you override your fear and increase your confidence by repeating this affirmation over and over again. You can eventually 
build your courage and confidence to the point where you are unafraid. Visualize yourself as unafraid. By visualizing yourself performing with confidence and competence in an area where you are fearful, your visual image will eventually be accepted by your subconscious mind as instructions for your performance. Your self-image, the way you see yourself and think about yourself, is eventually altered by feeding your mind these positive mental pictures of yourself performing at your best. By using the act as a method, you walk, talk, and carry yourself exactly as you would. If you were completely unafraid in a particular situation, you stand up straight, smile, move quickly and confidently, and in every aspect, act as if you already had the courage that you desire. The law of reversibility says that if you feel a certain way, you will act. in a manner consistent with that feeling but if you act in a manner consistent with that feeling even if you don't feel it the law of reversibility will create the feeling that is consistent with your actions this is one of the greatest breakthroughs in success psychology you develop the courage you desire by disciplining yourself repeatedly to do the things you fear until that fear eventually disappears and it will blow away the fear. When I work with sales organizations, they often ask me how to help a sales person break out of a sales slum, especially in a tough economy. I give them a simple formula that is guaranteed to work. Every single time it is called the 100 call method. In practicing this method, I instruct the salesperson to go out and call on 100 prospects as fast as he can, without caring at all whether or not he makes a sale. Whether the salesperson doesn't care if he makes a sale, his fear of rejection largely disappears. He stops caring if the prospect he is speaking to is interested or not interested. He has a single focus. It is to make 100 calls as fast as he possibly can. One sales organization I work with has a daily price for the first salesperson who gets rejected 10 times each morning. At 8.30 am, all the salespeople sit down at their desk and start making calls to try to win the price. By the time the contest is over, usually by 10 am, Everyone's fear of rejection have been thrown out of their systems. They are ready to call on prospects all day long, not caring at all about the reactions they get. Learn to speak on your feet. In 1923, Toastmasters International was formed. Its express purpose was to make people who were terrified of public speaking and help them to become confident and competent when speaking on their feet in front of an audience. According to the book of Let's, 54% of adults hate the fear of public speaking ahead of the fear of death. But Toastmaster International had a solution. They created a system based on what psychologists call systematic desensitization. Once a week, at a luncheon or dinner meeting, small groups of Toastmasters come together. Each person is required to stand up and give a short talk on a specified subject in front of a group of his peers. At the end of each talk, the speaker receives applause, positive input and comments from the other members. At the end of the evening, each person is given a grade of his talks, even if it was only for 30 or 60 seconds. 
after six months of attending those master's meetings, the individual will have a stood on his feet and spoken 26 times, receiving positive applause and feedback each time. Because of this continuous positive four months, his confidence increases dramatically. As a result of this process, countless Toastmasters have gone on to become excellent public speakers and prominent people in their business, organizations, and communities. Their fears of public speaking are gone forever. Eliminate two fears at once. Psychologists have found that certain fears are bundled together in the subconscious mind, like fires on the same circuit. If you can overcome your fear in one of these areas, you will also eliminate other fears on the same circuit. The fear of rejection or call reduction seems to be bundled together with the fear of public speaking. When you discipline yourself to join those masters or take a deal committee course to learn to speak confidently on your feet. Your fears of rejection disappear as well. Your level of self-confidence in all interactions with others increases dramatically. Your whole life changes in a positive way. Confront your fears. Your ability to confront deal with and act in spite of your Fear is the key to happiness and success. One of the best exercises you can practice is to identify a person or situation in your life of which you are afraid and resolve to deal with that fear situation immediately. Do not allow it to make you unhappy for another minute. Resolve to confront the situation or person to put the fear behind you. A woman in one of my seminars told me that her boss was a very negative person. She was constantly criticizing and berating her about her work. Even though she was one of the highest rating employees in the organization, she was making her life miserable. She didn't want to give up a job but she was afraid of confronting him. She asked me about what she should do. I gave her this advice which I have subsequently given to many other people. The only reason that one person bullies another is he feels he can get away with it. The only way to deal with a bully is to confront him. Bullies are actually coerced at her and they will flee from a confrontation. I told her to do this. The next time your boss criticizes you for any reason, turn to him and say, quite firmly, I won't appreciate if you not talk to me like that ever again. It hurts my feelings and stops me from doing my job the way you want. I told her to look him straight in the eye after she had finished making this statement. She had tremendous courage. Rather than putting up with this situation any longer. The next time her boss began to berate her, she squared off with him and said those words. She wrote to me and told me what had happened. Just as I had predicted, he stopped dead in his chair. He immediately apologized and mumbled and then quickly went back to his office. He never criticized her again. He told me that she could have spread his bad treatment of her many months before it if she had only had the courage to confront him directly the first time it happens. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can be free inferior without your consent. Move toward the fear. When you identify a fear and discipline yourself to move toward it, it grows smaller and more manageable. What's more, as your fears grow smaller, your confidence grows. Soon your fear lose their control over you. In contrast, when you take away from a fear inducing situation or person, 
your fear grows larger and larger. Soon it dominates your thinking and feeling. Fear occupies you during the day and often keeps you awake at night. Leaders have two types of courage. In leadership, the most common quality is that of vision. Leaders have a clear vision of where they want to take their organizations. Leaders also have a clear vision of where they want to be sometime in the future in their personal lives. The second most common quality of leaders is that of courage. Leaders have the courage to do whatever is necessary to complete their vision. They lead from the front end, dare to go forward. There are two types of courage that you need. First, you need the courage to launch, to take action, to take a leap of faith. You need the courage to go all in without any guarantee of success and with a high possibility of failure, at least in the short term. The major failing that holds most people back is that in spite of all their best intentions, they don't have the courage to take the first step. The second type of courage that you need is called courageous patience. This is the ability to hang in there and continue working and fighting after you have gone all in and before you have yet seen any results or rewards. When people can muster up the courage to take action toward a new goal, but when they see no immediate result, they quickly lose hurt and pull back to safety and security. They don't have staying power. Deal with the fear directly. The only way to deal with a fear is to address it head on. Remind yourself that denial is not a river in Egypt. The natural tendency of many people is to deny that they have a problem caused by fear of some kind. They are afraid of confronting it. In turn, it becomes a major source of distress, unhappiness, and psychosomatic illness. Be willing to deal with the situation or person directly, as Shakespeare said. Take some again a sea of troubles and in so doing, and them. The companion of fear is worry. Like twin sisters, fear and worry go around together. Mark Twain once wrote, I have worried about a lot of things in life, and most of them never happen. It has been estimated that 99% of the things that you worry about never happen. And most of the things that do happen, happen so quickly that, that you didn't have to no worry about them in the first place. The Disaster Report Whenever you are worried about something, fill out a disaster report on the situation. This will destroy your fear and worry almost instantly. This is often called the worry buster. The disaster report has four parts. First, define the worry situation clearly. What exactly are you worried about? Very often, when you take the time to be completely clear about the worry situation, a way to resolve the situation becomes immediately evident. Second, identify the worst most possible thing that could possibly happen. If this worry situation were to take place, would you lose your job? Would you lose your relationship? Would you lose your money? What is the worst thing that could possibly happen? Be clear about this. In many cases, you will see that should the worst occur, it would not show you. It might be inconvenient or uncomfortable, but you would eventually recover. You will find that it's probably not worth all the money that you are devoting to it. Third, resolve to accept the worst possible outcome. Should it occur, say to yourself, well, if that happens, it won't kill me. I will find a way to get along. Most of the stress of worry comes from denial, from not being willing to face the worst possible thing that could happen. But once you have resolved to accept the worst, should it occur, all the worry and stress seem to disappear. Fourth, begin immediately to improve on the cause. 
database type that you possibly can to make sure that the worst possible outcome does not occur. Take action immediately. Do something. Get on with it. Act quickly. Get so busy making sure that the worst thing does not happen that you have no time to worry. The real antidote. In the final analysis, the only real cure for fear or worry is discipline. Purposeful action in the direction of your goals. Get so busy working on your goals or the solutions to your problem that you have no time to be afraid or to worry about anything. When you practice the sad discipline of courage and force your yourself to face any fear inducing situation in your life. Your self esteem goes up, your self respect increases and your sense of personal pride grows. You will eventually reach the point in life where you are not afraid of anything. Once you have developed the courage to step out in faith, you must then develop the self discipline to Persistence, which we will talk about in the next chapter. Action exercises. First, identify so three biggest fears in life right now. What are these? Determine what you would do in each of these situations if you were guaranteed of complete success. What actions would you do? Third. What have you always wanted to do but been afraid to attempt? What would you do differently if you were guaranteed success? Fourth, in what three areas of life and work do you most experience the fears of failure and loss? What steps could you take immediately to confront and eliminate those fears? Fifth, in what three areas of life do you most experience the fears of criticism? rejection or embarrassment. How could you confront these fears and overcome them? Sixth, what one great goal would you set for yourself if you knew you could not fail? Seventh, what would you do differently in life if you had $20 million in the bank but only 10 years left to live? Eighth, 